Hello everybody, thanks for joining me again. And like I said, we are going to be building something special today, something new. Uh, it's going to be another XP system, and you can probably guess by the title of this episode, we are building what I'm calling a silverfish factory. Uh, it's an idea I had a couple weeks ago. Played around with it a bit in creative mode, and it's actually really cool. Um... I'm making it mostly for the fun of it. I still haven't worked out all the details on how uh, to do it. It's actually very complicated. Oh, there goes our bean of arthropods. But yeah, we're making an XP system. Uh, there's lots of different types of XP systems you can make in this game. And as far as getting XP quickly goes, I would have to say Blaze Farms win because they have 10 XP each. And if you find a dual blaze spawner, I, it's really tough to beat. Um, Enderman farms also give a lot of XP if they're set up well. And then a good average farms are like the zombie ones and the cave spider spawner ones. Those all work pretty good too. But these silverfish, they have... I was thinking about it, and they have a really neat property about them. They can hide in blocks. Uh, there's three types of blocks they can hide in. Regular cobblestone, smooth stone, and then uh, these regular stone bricks here. Uh, just just these type, not the mossy ones or the cracked ones. And that's really... Oh, this isn't killing them, is it? Okay, I gotta stop using that sword. That's really interesting because... It makes it possible to store XP inside of blocks, basically. Because these guys will hide in blocks after a certain amount of time. Um, I actually wanted to check to make sure, or to see if they will do it while aggravated at me. Let's help this guy up. He's mad at me. Oh, oh, no. He, no, now I'm mad at him. Yeah, these guys are quite the fun fun treat to work with. Probably one of the most annoying mobs in the game. Um, I'm just trying to see if they'll enter these blocks while mad at me. Normally they do when they come into contact with them uh, relatively quickly. If they're not aggro at you, but it doesn't seem like they're doing it while aggro. Yeah. Okay, so they can't be mad at us, which means they can't have a line of sight to us. Okay. Yeah, so silverfish spawners, there's only one per stronghold. Which means it's not going to be a very quick XP system. Like, it's not going to be good rates compared to some other things you can do. These guys only drop 5 XP. But... Since they can be stored inside of blocks, um, it has a unique property where you can actually, like if you AFK at a normal uh, spawner system, you have to deal with uh, lag issues and possibly crashing your game. If uh, you have hundreds and hundreds of mobs building up in them, and then if you walk away they just disappear, that's it. But with a silverfish system, you can store them and then cash them in whenever you want type thing, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to start working on this pretty quick here. I'm just going to get my stuff together and we will get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is get rid of all this lava so I don't walk into it again or anything like that. We'll need it for later too. And I don't think the portal needs it to be around, I hope. Pretty sure it doesn't. And grab that. So we got six buckets. The rest I'm just going to fill in with. It's going to kill it. Oh. Before it kills me. Oh, nope. Too late. These guys, man, they're so bad. Uh, I can't really shut down the spawner too well either. 
because they... I read the wiki and it said light level 11 or lower they can spawn from the spawner. Uh, we'll probably test that ourselves just to check in a little bit here. Fill this in. Yeah, I would definitely die today if I didn't do that. Now, the big problem we have is this portal's in the way. We could remove it, and this would be a lot easier to build then. And it would also work better, but... This is also my only portal to the end that I have. I wasn't able to locate any other strongholds yet, so... Oh, it did go out. Nope. Oh, dang, I didn't want to come here. Uh, okay, I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, I made it back here, and I've started making a case around the spawner like I usually do. Um, it's going to be that 8x8 eight eight thing. The spawner is below this block here, and goes out four blocks this way from that, and three blocks this way. Numbers get lower this direction, so that's how I figure that out. Um, and that thing with the portal, it's just a visual thing. You, pro you all probably knew that. Um, but you can see it from on top and not from below, even though it's there. So yeah, I'm trying not to break this portal here if I can help it. Uh, I would get better rates if I did, and this would be a lot easier to do if I did, but this is my only portal I know of in my world. I've tried finding more strongholds, but I haven't succeeded yet. Haven't looked really hard, but I, I have thrown pearls around to check and haven't found any new ones. Um, a lot of people say there's more than three per world, but as far as I've seen so far, I haven't seen ed any evidence suggesting there's more. Um, not saying there isn't, but I haven't s seen any proof of there being more than three per world, so I don't want to risk destroying one of these portals if I can help it. And uh, So that means I'm going to try and make my case around it and just incorporate it inside and see how that goes. So I will work on making the 8x8 case and we will probably install a lighting system to this once we figure out the exact light level we'll make sure it's 11 or lower like the wiki says uh, so I will check back in a little bit here and once I make some more progress okay I'm having silverfish problems <laughs> uh, my uh, flint and steel broke, so I've just been hitting them. Just to get rid of them all. I want them all to break from the blocks. And this reminds me of something, too. While playing around on Spellbound Caves, like just for the fun of it, I found out a little exploit you can do in the Skittering Mines. Um, if you have diamond armor, a regen potion, and one of those flaming battle signs, you can keep hitting the silverfish in that area and you'll hundreds and hundreds will just swarm around you and they're all a one hit kill and XP will just flow like like water like as quick as you can hit the mouse button you'll get XP from them kinda like I'm doing here it's just filling up the room this is kinda what the mob system is gonna be like only hopefully it'll be better even I got most of them out of this room. And I am going to get back to work here. Found a new air. Oh, look at it. Oh, it's beautiful. No, they're going to push me in the lava. Creepy, creepy Enderman back there. Mm hmm. Okay, back to work. Alright, as by the Enderman farm, I decided to level up to 50 since we were so close. And here we go, doing a pick. Uh, decent, I like those. Not going to complain about that. 
So I've been playing around with the lighting here, and I'm still having them spawn in the middle. Uh, even with torches all around, pretty much, except that side. I think the only way I can actually make a lighting system for this to turn it on and off is to replace the entire ceiling with the lamps. Because they'll be light level 15, and this would be 14, 13, 12. And if these guys need light level 11 or lower to spawn, they shouldn't... Uh, should be spawning at that. So that's probably what I'll end up doing. These guys, man. Um, they don't seem to be spawning around the portal. Like, I kind of thought they would spawn above it and below it, but that doesn't seem to be happening at all. Although it might be because of the lights, but even before that I never noticed it. So, yeah, I'll be back when this is replaced. It's a little bit expensive, but I definitely want an on-off for this, because these guys are extremely annoying. Alright, so that is definitely doing the trick now. We're not getting any more spawns. Uh, this is an 8x8 ceiling, so that's 64 lamps I had to put up here. But uh, there's no real way to avoid that. I could probably have less if I was to put some in the walls of this but then the wiring becomes more complicated and I just don't want to deal with that because I'm not exactly sure how to build this yet so the simpler I can make it the better uh, ideally when this is all done we want this as dark as possible in here to maximize the spawn rates as well so we need to cover up this these portal blocks because I think they let light through and we can't have them outside like this or else light will pass through into the spawning room here. We want it completely sealed off when this is done. And I'm gonna replace these this wood I've put with sandstone I think. Something non flammable. And we can't use a stone cobblestone or these stone bricks because uh the silverfish will hide in them and we can't have that either. I could use like the the cracked ones or the mossy ones, but uh, they're more of a rare block, so I'd rather use sandstone. And also, there's something very unique about these silver fish spawners as well. Even in high light levels, even in high light levels, uh, they can spawn on stone. Just stone. I don't think cobblestone works. Um, at least I hope they did do, otherwise I just lied. Well, maybe put a few more. Increase the chances. Hmm, don't know why it's not happening. Come on. So the only area they can spawn in here is these first, these uh, three layers here. This one, this one, and this one. Nothing below, nothing above. The spawners, the spawners in between at this layer here. Yeah, they're not spawning. When I tried it before in Creative, it worked. Unless that changed. They really should be spawning by now. Hmm. Don't know what the deal is. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's because the light was blocked out, though. That doesn't count. Um, yeah, I don't know why that's not working now. Anyway, I'll uh, show you the wiring for the lights. It's very simple. Might be able to do it a little better yet. Uh, just an outer ring here, and then little branches off here for the corners, otherwise they wouldn't be lit. And that pretty much covers the whole thing. Okay, so I'm going to finish this up. I'm going to replace it with sandstone, and I will be back. Oh yeah, one other thing I was going to show you is that uh, mobs will spawn at light level 11 
or lower. I just saw it. I had only four places with lamps missing, so it's only four blocks in this area within the spawner that they can spawn uh, with a light level of 11, and everything else is 12 or higher. So they they can spawn at light level 11 or lower. It's confirmed the wiki is correct. Okay, I'm back again, and I have learned quite a few new things here. Uh, the case is done, pretty much. I just made a little viewing window here so I could see their behavior. Apparently, these guys have the same property that spiders have, where they will... Or not property, but behavior, where they will track your player through blocks, like, without a direct line of sight to you. Um... That might cause problems. It won't be too big of an issue, but as soon as you get a little ways away from them, uh, they start to wander around. So if, if they're tracking like they were before, they won't enter the stone blocks, I'm pretty sure, which uh, would prevent this all from working. So we need to make sure we are... It looks like it's only eight blocks, so one, two, three, four, five, six... Seven. Yeah, it's about eight blocks. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, maybe, maybe like nine. Nine or ten. So it's. I don't think it's quite as far as spiders' tracking ability. Uh, the way I'm doing the spawner, I'm dropping them down. Let's see. Spawner's at that level there. One, two, three, four, five blocks. And that's so that these guys are out of range of the spawner so that it'll keep spawning more. So more than six will spawn. And after a long period of time, this room would just fill up with hundreds of them. Uh, you can see the lights are off, but there's still light in here. And that's my next major problem, I've realized. Apparently that end portal emits a light level of 15. So another reason I want to destroy it, but at the same time I need it. So I'll have to probably encase it with blocks. But I'm going to first try uh, making a backup of my world here and maybe destroying some of the blocks. See if we can and possibly make it smaller. And I'm going to try Silk Touch on it too. I don't know if we can actually even destroy the, the frame, but we're going to try it. Um, there was something else I was going to show you. I know it, but I can't remember now. Oh well. Okay, I remember now. I was going to show you them entering the stone box. Um, so we're going to turn this on. Stop the spawning. And we're going to go in there and get our butts kicked. I only have my uh, pants on right now. Hopefully I'll be okay. Need to make a new set of armor, I guess. Okay. Yeah, so I'm just going to put down some blocks here so we can observe the silver fish entering them. Uh, let's put one there. And these are the three types. And they can enter them if they're directly below too. So if we put one like here, they'll be able they'll be able to enter that too. Okay, so uh, we're gonna turn this back on. And it hopefully won't take too long. Have to be away from them though. So it's kind of random. It's like when they make contact with it, then uh, quite often they'll enter the block. Or if it gets in their way when they're walking. That guy just walked over him, but he didn't go in. So they don't always do it, but uh, 
if you have lots of them walking around, it's going to happen for sure. Come on, guys. Any day now. Also, I want to give a shout out and a thanks to uh, Premier Pixel who has made me a new. Uh, there we go. He entered the stone block right there. Who uh, made me a new channel background, new image for that with the new layout that I'm forced to use now. Uh, all YouTube pages are required to use a new channel layout so I'm sorry if you don't like it but you're gonna have to get used to it because I can't uh, can't use the old one anymore and I want to say thanks to uh, the Mr. Shizable who provided the old background which served its purpose for a long time it was a great background and even though it's retired now it had a had good use so thanks Mr. Shizable for that as well so we can see, I think, yeah, they entered that one, that one, that one. I must have missed all these. Not that one, and not that one. Hmm. They can, though. Not when they're tracking me. Okay, well, anyway. The portal. I have to do something about the portal. Oh. Ladybug just landed on me. Ah! That was distracting. Okay, one sec. Oh yeah, and if you make one of these, make sure you put a glass block above the spawner too, otherwise that will happen. It'll get stuck up there. And he won't come down. Unless you do that. Okay, so I made the backup. We're going to try, see if we can destroy this. Might not be able to, it's something I've never tried. We're going to try Silk Touch. Nope. Indestructible. We're going to try the actual portal. Also indestructible. Okay. I read something about maybe being able to wash it away with a bucket. Water bucket. We'll try that too. Um, and if that doesn't work, we'll just have to encase it with blocks and take the hit. Okay. Nope. That is not true. Whoa. What happened to my water? Did that, I didn't place it there, did I? I must have. Okay. Um, yeah, we're going to be encasing it then. Uh, we will lose a fair bit of space in here. Plus side is we can remove the lamps above and we'll have an easy way to get back into the portal. Um, but we will lose some spawning space, which means spawning rates will be decreased slightly from it. So lower XP rates. Here's another update for you guys. I have been busy here. I have encased the portal. Uh, that has reduced the amount of spawning space by about a third. So there's two thirds left or so. Um, it's going to lower rates, but we'll have to deal with it. Uh, on top here, now we can get into the portal actually. Uh, just down here. Which I'll probably adjust that yet, make it look a little better. Um, then I've started making a little place for the silverfish to fall in this, this line here to get them a little bit more compressed. And then they're going to come to the end and fall down here. And I think I'm going to put water along this wall here. I'm not sure if water's better or not as far as, uh, getting them to that spot there because they fight the current really uh, aggressively. 
but doing this will ensure there's no other mob spawns in here. So that's one of the main reasons I'm doing that. Then for down there, I think I'm just going to put uh, half slabs so we don't get any mob spawns. And it will still be a block and a half so they won't be able to jump up and out of here. Um, this will have to be moved. I tested this and silverfish are taller than half a block. So they would not be able to fall down there. Um, I guess now we can actually do this, which is awesome. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm using so much sandstone on this. But I love sandstone, so may as well. Okay, so I am going to get rid of this. And... Let's see, we're going to put glass along here just for now while we're testing this so we can see what they're doing, hopefully. Um, yeah, I'm just going to try to turn it on and see what happens here. Did the silverfish go down already? Oh, he did. Because they're tracking me, they just beeline right to the wall here. Yeah. So it's nice and dark in there now. <coughs> Excuse me. It's nice and dark in there now that I got that uh, portal encased. Um, these guys, it really doesn't matter how much damage they get uh, while I'm processing them here in my factory. Because once they go in the block, their health will get reset, basically. So if they have half a heart and they enter a block when they when you break it, they're gonna have four hearts again. So it resets when they get recreated. Um, okay, I'm gonna shut that off. We're about to do. We're about at the fun part here. Uh, just give me one moment and I'll be back. Actually, I should probably explain the idea to you a little bit more before we advance any further here. So uh, what we have, what we've built already, is a way to spawn silverfish. Uh, we can control when they spawn using our lighting system, and then the water stream and their pathfinding will bring them all to this one spot here. They all concentrate here. So beyond that, in our factory, we need a way to get them into the blocks, the stone, cobblestone, or these stone bricks. Uh, so that we can store their XP. Um, and basically we're going to need lots and lots and lots of blocks because uh, this thing's going to spawn an infinite amount of silverfish. So ideally we want an infinite amount of blocks. So the way I thought of doing that is just to have a smooth stone generator or a cobblestone generator, whatever you choose, uh, to create an infinite amount of blocks for them to hide in. Hello. They're having a party over there. I blocked this area all up so that creepers can't get here. But they can still look. Um, yeah. So I was thinking there's two good ways of doing this, really. Uh, one would be to have a room of cobblestone generators. Uh, creating big like 12 by 12 slabs of smooth stone that spider can get here and then let the silverfish loose in the room and let them wander around and they'll randomly enter blocks and uh, then when you start the chain reaction of hitting the silverfish and making them come out of the blocks uh, the slabs will get full of holes and then the cobblestone generators will uh, create new blocks and make it all solid again to restart the process. So that's one idea. That's the easy way of doing it. There's mobs everywhere. Oh yeah, and when you break a block that has a silverfish in, or when you hit a silverfish uh, and not kill them, uh, the game will check a 10 by 10 
area all around them, like all around the sides of the silverfish, and a five above and five below. Five blocks above and below the silverfish for any more silverfish blocks. And if there's any in that range, then there's a possibility of them coming out of other blocks. I'm waiting for you. So in that way you can control uh, where they come out of blocks. Um, so you could potentially set up rooms. Like if you wanted to control how many levels you gain from breaking all the silverfish blocks. Um, it takes 4,625 XP to get to level 50 from level 0. That would be 925 blocks you would need in a room. Uh, to make that happen because each silverfish is 5 XP so you could have several rooms fill up and then every time you want to get a level 50 enchantment you just go in the room uh, make all the blo all the silverfish come out and uh, you'll go from 0 to 50 that way and just space the rooms far enough apart where uh, breaking them in or killing the silverfish in one room won't affect them in the other room. I'm rambling a lot, I'm sorry. But the way we're doing this one is a little bit different. This is the second idea I had. This is more controlled. We're gonna make the silverfish fall on this sandstone here. Then where this glass block is, we're gonna have our infinite line of smooth stone from a generator over there. Um, and we'll put a bud switch next to this smooth stone block here. And it will detect when a silverfish enters a block. And then it will tell the generator to create a new block. And it will push the silverfish block away and put a fresh new smooth stone block in its way for more silverfish to enter. And every time that happens, it will keep creating a chain of silverfish blocks and then we can clump them together in like big 12 by 12 by 12 cubes uh, at the end of all this. So that's the plan. That's what we're trying to do here. Uh, it's very complicated actually and getting this timed right is going to be very difficult. As I've played around with this before I had a lot of trouble with it. Okay, so I think we're ready to build on some more here. Uh, the next step to this is going to be probably putting the cobblestone generator or smooth stone generator. If I say cobblestone generator, I mean smooth stone. Uh, use that word interchangingly or whatever. Um, I think this is a good enough distance here, if I remember right. I have built this before, but I'm going by memory. Uh, and I played around quite a bit with different ways of making the generator. It's really important that it's quick, and I was having a hard time making one that could quickly produce blocks. Uh, came up with this design. It's pretty good. It's not perfect, but it seems to do the trick not too bad. And it has a safety to it as well. If, if it ever glitches out where it doesn't... Uh, or where the lava flows through the water, uh, it's able to correct itself because it's uh, two generators into one. I'll, I'll be able to explain it a little better as we build it here. Um, so lava goes above the piston arms there and another one over here. Like that. Lava will go right there and right there. Okay. And then we need a place for the water. The water goes to the left and right of this piston here. This is the main one that pushes the block. Um, let's see. We'll just put that there for the water. I think we can use glass for this if I remember right. Just so we can see what's going on. Um, the water will go there, flow down one block, so we'll put another one like that. 
yeah, if it can't keep up, this thing's gonna jam up and stop working. So we need a very quick one, or else we need to really regulate uh, the rate that silverfish blocks can be created, otherwise it will get ahead of itself. Okay. Be careful with the shovel. I'm so sad you can't pick up glass blocks with silk touch anymore. That was, uh, they're really nerfing silk touch. You can't pick up silverfish blocks with them. I re or ice. They need to get that stuff back. That's why silk touch was so awesome. Okay, water there. Water there. Lava above. I think it's safe to put it now. Yep. Make smooth stone. Pistons push it to the middle. We will need to put furnaces on both sides of these two so that uh, the pistons can't push each other. One of them will be dominant over the other one. Um, so we'll we'll see when it's set up here. Woohoo! Okay, furnace over here. Not that it really matters. We have a wall behind, but if I move that, I want it to work still. And one over here. Okay. It's taking shape. Put that there. And I think that's it. That's good. Okay, now we need to wire it. Um, hmm. I wonder if I should. I wonder if I can cover that. I think I'm able to. Like I said, I'm building this from memory, so I might make a mistake. Uh, we can put sandstone over top here. So we need to run a wire to that arm. We probably actually need this to be sandstone. And one over here. Okay, so I'll wire this and then I'll be back. Probably take a few seconds only. Minutes, <laughs> maybe hours, I don't know. It'll take a little while. Not overly exciting. Yeah, there seems to be a real party up there now. We got two creepers and a skeleton. I don't know how they keep getting there, so... They're, they must really be tracking me. It's amaz The new AI is pretty amazing. Yeah, I think this is all ready to go here. So yeah, there's going to be a dominant piston, because both these pistons get activated with the same delay, so the game has to decide which one gets actually gets pushed, because they can't both push to the same block. But if this thing is running so quick that one of these doesn't have a block anymore, uh, the other one will still push it. And uh, in that way, we can have two blocks being created at a time, up to two, and it'll create uh, smooth stone a little bit quicker than if you were just to have one. And I got a button here. The middle one is set at a two delay. I think that's the way this is supposed to be. I hope. Okay. Maybe we'll push it a few more times. Heard the sizzle. That's what I mean when I say the lava overtakes the water. Uh, if that happens, no smooth stone gets created. And if you only had the one, that would be it. The thing would be jammed up. But if you have two, uh, it allows the block to still get pushed by one of them, and uh, the lava gets cut by the piston arm, so then it is able to fix itself on the, on the corrupted one. So that's good, and we are making smooth stone. Nice. Okay, so the silverfish will come down here. They can enter from the side of the block, so that's that's all good. Um, next thing we gotta hook up is the bud switch. Yeah, so the bud switch goes right on this block here. This is next to the silverfish chamber in here. Uh, so, sticky piston, 
put a block on it, and that will extend to um, let's see. Oh, I think that's where we want it. It'll be a redstone torch, and then we need it to reset. So, um, if there is a repeater. Oh, dang, what did we hit? <laughs> Oop. There it is. Gotta be really careful with these tools. They're too good. Way too good. Okay. Put that there. Repeater. I think we want the repeater at one delay, as low as possible. Um, that will go to a block, and we need to invert the signal. So we'll get one more of these. I think over here. And then uh gotta run that signal to the piston. Ah, oh, I keep doing that. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's so hard working in this cave. Everything's a mess. Oop. Using my good blocks too. Yep. Okay. Where's my wire? So we can grab the power from there and run it over to the piston. We want it diagonal of the piston so that whenever the block gets placed next to it, it updates and does that. Okay. So that'll send out a pulse. And now we want that pulse to go to here so that it'll activate the cobblestone generator. So we're going to start another path over here. Um, hmm, can you place redstone on... yeah, you can. Okay, that might be a good idea. Uh, I think we can do it with no... or not too much delay. I think if we do that, it'll work. So let's see if it makes a smooth stone when we update. Yeah. Awesome. So that's going to happen every time a silver fish enters a block. Uh, so technically, I think this is all ready to go, but it's not going to work at this state for very long. Uh, and that's the next thing we have to deal with. Let's see. What should we do? Uh, we should test this to make sure it works. Uh, when I was playing around with this before, I was doing it in creative mode, and obviously things are a bit different with this. We'll have to keep our distance, otherwise they'll be aggro at us, and uh, they won't enter the blocks. Unless they're not tracking me now. I almost think he's not tracking me now. It's hard to say. Let's see. Uh, and it might take a while before it really starts going. Uh, once the concentration of silverfish increases, they're more likely to touch that block there and then enter it. Might be tracking me. I can't quite tell. There we go. And there we go. So, these are silverfish blocks now. Pretty cool, huh? But, it's not going to run for very long like this. It has problems. Alright, so I'm going to try to demonstrate the problem with the way this is set up right now. Why it won't run for the long term, like several minutes or hours. Uh, we have about 21, maybe 16 silverfish in here. They're not able to enter the block right now because I'm standing next to it and they're tracking me. This is a stone block. There's no silverfish in it yet. As soon as I back away, though, they'll, be, they'll be able to enter. And they'll all enter really quickly. 
That's silverfish, and that is also silverfish. So they beat the bud switch, basically. Uh, they're able to enter the new stone block before the bud switch uh, resets and is able to detect them. And there really is no way of dealing with that because the bud switch needs a certain amount of delay to work. The signal needs to be inverted and you also need that repeater. So two delay is the minimum for a bud switch like this. I'm pretty sure. And the silver fish can enter basically instantly. So this is a real pain to sink and this is where I ran into trouble when I was uh, playing around with this before in creative mode. Uh, this is about as far as I got with the project. And this is where it gets interesting, really interesting. The other thing is we need the cobblestone generator to not be activated overly quickly either, otherwise uh, it won't be able to keep up creating blocks and it will jam up too. So cobblestone generator needs a little delay. Bud switch um, has to be timed right, otherwise uh, silverfish will enter the block and if you delay the cobblestone generator, uh, the bud switch will also activate when these blocks get pushed, so it'll get activated twice. So that's another problem. I played around with the T flip flop bud switch and uh, I basically had the same problems can't keep up with the silver fish entering the blocks. So we need to add a new third delay here. We're going to have to put a piston underneath where all these silver fish are. And we will have to hook this up to the bud switch as well. There we go. So that um, before the, the new stone block whoop, gets pushed over here. Before that happens, this needs to extend. And once the bud switch is all ready and waiting to detect a silverfish to enter it, then this can retract so that they are able to enter it. That's what we need to do with the redstone yet. And uh, I'm guessing I will probably do that another day because this episode's getting really long. But, from this point, as far as what, what we do with these blocks, we can uh, hook up some smart pistons and uh, move them to other areas and possibly clump them into several different rooms. Uh, we should be able to control that pretty easily. Uh, I'm going to do one more test run here with me standing at a distance from the get-go because when I did it before I had them all concentrated and that's what jams it up with this current setup so we'll just see how long it'll run on its own uh, with a steady spawn rate okay here we go I replaced this all with glass so we can hopefully see what's going on a little bit better uh, I'm curious to see how long it takes them to actually fall down and we will have to get far enough away where they can't see us. They can still see me for some reason. Hmm. Hey. I wonder if they can see farther if you use glass. Oh, now he's doing his own thing. Okay. Problem is, I might be too far away for the spawners to work now. Need to try to get a little bit closer. Yeah, okay, it's going. So we'll just kind of wander back and forth on there. Eventually they might fall down. Uh, and they do like to fight the water currents if they're not tracking you. It's just what they do. And he seems to want to go back up now. Okay, I skipped ahead here, and we still haven't had a single one fall down there yet. There's uh, about 20 or so. Maybe a bit more. 
we should probably use a water stream there then because they don't want to fall down on their own it seems unless they get pushed so yeah gonna put a water stream in here's our next attempt it seems to be working better that's for sure we might have to lower that drop I hate to do it but uh, they seem to try to jump out if they fall down back into the water stream which would definitely be a problem Or maybe we could try to use a half slab there and see what happens. So he, he fell down, then he jumped back up. Oh, oh, that was actually pretty good. Uh, ideally, if we can make this work so that generally there's only one in there at a time in that concentrated chamber, uh, the better. It seems to jam up more so if there's a lot of them. But it looks like they're stirring a bunch up now. Hmm. There we go. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I like the concept of this farm. I don't know how good it's actually going to be, to be honest. Uh, I just think it's really cool. But I, it would be really neat if I had my storage room above this and it was running constantly and every now and then you would just check to see how many blocks have gathered together and it would be a pretty good XP farm. And right next to the end portal that would be cool too. Yeah, yeah, it's working good. Relatively good. I, I'm pretty sure after a few minutes, if if this could keep running, it would eventually jam up. Uh, I think it does keep up with the rate that they spawn, which is good. It's very important. What are we at? We're at 17. There was, there's always going to be a few around. Um... They're one of those mobs that's hard to make go where you want. They, they're fighting the current. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to end this here today and we'll work on maybe improving it later. There's a lot you could do with this yet. Lots of different ways you could set this up too. Um, if we can't get this way to work, I might try that other method I talked about with the the rooms of full of hundreds of blocks, and we just let the silverfish run around and do their thing. But I like this way because you know guaranteed every one of those blocks is a silverfish. That's what's cool about this method. It's just a lot harder to make it work. And I think we've hit pretty close to the end here. Yeah. Is that silverfish? Yep. So it jammed. Or maybe it might have been too long there. I can't tell. Anyway, I'm going to say goodbye t for today. Thanks for watching, everybody. And I'll see you again next time.